Okay, thank you, yeah, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus. Lord, there you see him move again. Thank you, Lord. Cool. <laughs> he's in front of you. Yeah, and he's a big guy. Yeah. 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 Go for it, Ray. You're live. I am. I am alive. Welcome to God is in the House on Thursday. This is the 25th of March, and we are inching away into April. And uh, the nice thing about that for us here in Manitoba, that means spring is very close, and we're getting to warmer weather. So uh, that's a big hallelujah for us up here in Canada. Now, if you're out in Africa or down really south in the States, in Louisiana, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> you guys got nice weather down there. Uh, but uh, here... It just makes uh, the grass is not green yet. It's still trying to figure out we need some rain and we need some warm weather. So, so that's, you know, that's, that's something about, you know, if you're going to plant a crop, you've got to make sure that you've got the right seed. You've got to make sure that there's proper moisture in the ground. You've got to make sure that there is enough heat to make sure that the seed germinates. And um, so... There's very little difference between that and um, advancing the kingdom of God. You know, you've, you've got to have, based on the kingdom of God, you've got to have the right kind of field. And you've got to have the right kind of seed. And you've got to have the right kind of moisture that comes from the Holy Spirit. You've got to have the right kind of heat that comes from the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and we've got to follow Jesus. And uh, everything else will fall into place, right? So that's why we're going to start here in... Uh, Acts chapter 10, uh, in a bit, Acts chapter 10, we're going to go from 34 to 43. Um, that, that's going to be our, um, well, you know, we're just going into Passover. We're just, and we're going to be talking about that uh, a little bit in this segment and more in the next segment. But uh, uh, we want to open up more in, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, how, in, in thanksgiving and in prayer and in praise reports and in testimony, uh, the testimony of Jesus, you know, Revelations 12, 11, the blood of the lamb. You know, the blood of the lamb, it really destroys the enemy. You know, your testimony destroys the enemy. Yes. So um, with that, Leslie, do you have something that uh, in prayer that you want to start off with or do you have an exhortation or uh, what do you have set up there. Um, <clears throat> okay, I've just, got, I've just opened up back to 10 on here. Okay. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we're going to start. It's always, always really good to be thankful and grateful. Mm -hmm. And there's so much in each and every one of our days that we can be grateful for. And, and uh, you know, the... In, there's a you know I, was, I just sort of pulled up a couple of scriptures earlier today, but in Psalm 107 verse 21, mm -hmm. and it says, "Let them give thanks to the Lord for mm -hmm. His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for mankind." For His unfailing love, I mean, love never fails. You know, right. first right? Yeah. right? Um, so His unfailing love—that's so much to be grateful for because we can, we can be the unlovables at times. You know. Um, if we have, if we're having a bad day, or um, we can be one of those ones that might be a, unlovable, but the Lord loves us at all times, and His love never fails us. He's always, always with so, us. So that was one hundred seven. One hundred seven, verse twenty-one, and and it basically says the same thing again. He repeats it. It's got you know the Lord must be trying to get a point across because it's in one hundred seven thirty-one as well. The same thing again. Um, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Mm -hmm. So everything that he does is out of love. And, you know, whatever he, whatever he does, because he is love. And, um, Can you read 32 as well? Well, I can if I open it up on here. Well, I got it. Okay, you go for it then. Where, and it says, let them exalt him also in the assembly. Well, <laughs> let them exalt them in the, and we are assembled here and God is in the house. Amen. You know, and, and you know, it, it, it says not to forsake the assembly of the, how could I say, the oh, sons and daughters to come together and to worship and bring a psalm and bring a good testimony yes. and mm -hmm. uh, bring some crackers and uh, <laughs> cheese. 
yeah, uh, <laughs> some crackers and uh, cheese and different things just to share and, uh, together. But it, but it says not to forsake the assembly, and and it says of the people. You know, uh, you know. Um, I wonder if we have a bit of a problem with that right now in North America, not to forsake the. The assembly, yeah, the assembly together. together. I know we just came back from Liberia. It's not a problem there. They don't have a COVID problem, and they don't have any issue with you know the assembly is there in a lot of places in Africa. You know the, there is no COVID issue. So we just gonna pray this COVID nineteen yes. and every other issue in in North America, the United States and Canada. We just say we say thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood. Of the of your blood that has conquered every disease, mm. and in yeah. that blood that has conquered yeah. every disease mm. is going to make open the doors for all the assemblies and all the churches and all the ecclesia, so that we can come together and praise the name of the Lord Jesus together, regardless of what denomination. Oh, yeah. So we yeah. publicly de declare and we proclaim. As we bury, we have a coffin, and we bury COVID-19 and put it into the place of death, into hell where it came from, and we say it stays there, and it is dead, and is no longer causing any more problems in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we, pro we pro proclaim and declare and prophesy its death, Amen. and that and that coronavirus is dead in oh, Jesus man. name yeah. the, by the blood of, of the lamb so we're going to pray it out of pray it out of Canada pray it out of North America and we're going to pray it out of all our churches how does that amen they, they've amen. done that in other places we to do. Yeah, we've got to have the authority and the power so so that's why it says it says let him also assemble the people and it says and praise him in the company of what of the elders so praise him right now we're in the month of Nisan and the month of Nisan is the month of Judah and the month of Judah is praise Hallelujah. Praise Yada, his love and his mercy endureth forever. So we just thank the Lord. We thank you for praise and we thank you that his army of angels, his mm -hmm. army is going forth and taking out the enemy in Jesus' Amen. name. Mm -hmm. So there we go. What do you got? What else? Okay. Yeah, and green and green oh. is the color. If we if we you know so and green is the color of praise, and it's also the color of of healing and it's also the color of the line of judah so if you're that's, see that is green so we i'm in blue but the, the ladies are in green so they are definitely they are definitely uh the line of judah these ladies are just a roaring in jesus name okay okay let, okay give thanks <laughs> thank you thank you very much <laughs> Well, thank you, Lord. Father God, we just want to say we thank you that wherever two or three are gathered together, there you are in the midst of us. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are here, that you are very present, and you are a present, you are a present help in times of trouble. Lord. We just want to thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we, at any moment, we can come before the throne of grace, mm -hmm. and we can just, we can just come to you, and we can just know that we're always because Jesus Christ has already defeated the enemy on thank the cross you, and we say those gates open on, open wide and we thank you Lord we come through those gates with thanksgiving and we enter into the courts with praise and we praise you Father we praise you Lord we say thank you thank you Lord that you love us beyond a shadow of a doubt and <laughs> Lord you are always always with us and so Father we just say we bless you we bless you Lord and we just thank you for the blood the blood of Jesus, yes. the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb, and and for, and for the word of our testimony, Lord, and for the testimony of Jesus, spirit of prophecy, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we just Jesus. bless your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, you got another one there? Nope. You don't? Well, nope, let's go to I'm sure you do, though. Oh, no, well, how do you know that? Let's go to Revelations 12, 11. Uh -huh. You talked about it. Let's... let's Let's just see how important this is. And if we start in verse, um, even in verse 10, you know, in Revelations, uh, chapter 12, verse 10. And then it says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. Wow. Now, I think kingdom kingdom has come from heaven unto earth because the disciples asked Jesus, how do we pray? He says, well, our Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth. On earth. Mm. On earth. On earth as it is in heaven. So when we look at uh, Revelation chapter 10, and it says, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. So Adonai is, and, and it says the power of his Messiah, the power of Adonai Elohim's son, the power of the Christ, the power of the blood of the Messiah has come. And who has he come for? For the accuser of the brethren. Who's the accuser of the brethren? Satan. Yep. So it's not our in-laws. Praise the Lord, it's not our in-laws. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. That was my one time or another. <laughs> and I'm still alive. Do I get an amen out there? Hallelujah. <laughs> No, I'm just, well, I, you know, you've got to have a sense of humor, right? So, so the accuser of the brethren is Satan and his board. So it, let's just follow through this a little bit here. And it says, for the accuser of the brethren, hmm, who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Day and night he has been accusing the brethren? But he says he has been cast down. When he says cast down, is that being in? Uh, is that making plaster of Paris and putting him in a cast and throwing him down on the on the floor? Is that what, cast down? No. Yeah, hold him in a, a tomb? Is, 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 are you making a cast iron tomb out of it or what? No, he was cast down. Thrown he was out. cast down from heaven. He was thrown out. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And it says like lightning, right? In Luke chapter what? Given the right foot of fellowship. <laughs> yeah. That's right. He, and you know, Kaboot. so Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Can you read that, Leslie? Can you get it? Let's go there. Because this is, this is, this is. Did you even get to where you wanted to be in Revelation? Yeah, I'm coming back. But I want, because it says, it says, it says the accuser mm -hmm. of the brethren who accused them, that's us, before our God, Adonai, Elohim, day and night, has been cast down. Now, Luke, so, Luke what? Luke? Yeah, let's try. Which scripture again? Luke, what is it? I think it's uh, Luke 19, verse 10, or it's Luke 10, verse 19. Maybe I got it backwards. Uh, it's neither. Well, well, not, I shouldn't say neither. It's not Luke well, I, 19, 10. Huh? Well, do you want to hook in with us? So I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah, but. well, yeah. Um, yep. Could be interesting. Luke 10, 19. Ah, the other way around. There it is. Yes. Luke 10, 19. Yeah, Luke 10. Well, we'll start in 17. That could make a difference. Yeah, Luke. Okay. So read 17, 18, 19. All right. And 20. Okie doke. All right. So here we are. And it's um, this is the voice translation. And so... Um, in, uh, well, verse 16, kind of 17, that's to follow 16. Um, Listen, disciples, if people give you a hearing, they're giving me a hearing. This is Jesus. And um, if they reject you, they are rejecting me. If they reject me, they're re rejecting the one who sent me. So go now. And when the 70 had completed their mission and returned to report on their experiences, they were elated. And then... In, in uh, they all said, it's amazing, Lord. When we use your name, the demons do what we say. I mean, we, we as Christians can get kind of excited about that too. We're just like, yee-haw, you know, the, when we use the name of Jesus, um, those demons, they have to, they have to uh, do what we say. And then Jesus says in verse 18, I saw Satan falling from above like a lightning bolt. I've given you the true authority. Um... Yeah. No. Right. <laughs> okay. I've Keep given on. you the true authority. Okay. I wasn't sure if that got around or not. No. Um. I'm sorry. Um, I'm giving you the true authority. You can smash vipers and scorpions under your feet. So, so Jesus, is, you know, in reference, you know, to what you were saying in a Revelation. Yep. I saw Satan fall from above like a lightning bolt. I've given you, who are who are we, the disciples. True authority. You can smash vipers and scorpions under your feet. 
You can walk all over the power of the enemy. Boom, boom, boom. Why? Because we have more power. Because Jesus is in us. You can't be harmed. And yet, so many times, you know, we seem to limp along thinking that we have been harmed by the, you know, the, the scorpions and the vipers and the, those entities, you know, of the, of the one that's already been cast down. You can't be harmed. But listen, that's not the point. Don't be elated with evil spirits. Pardon me. That evil spirits leave when you say to leave. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And so then Jesus himself became elated. Holy Spirit was on him, and he began to pray with joy. Amen. And there's a, you know, and this is where he's saying, thank you. He's, he's giving thanks. Thank you, Father. Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding your mysteries from the wise and the intellectual, instead revealing them to little children. Your ways are truly gracious. My Father has given me everything. No one knows the full identity of the Son except the Father. And nobody knows the full identity of the Father except the Son. And the Son fully reveals the Father to whom he wishes. Mm -hmm. Then, almost in a whisper to the disciples, he says, How blessed are your eyes to see what you see. Many prophets and kings have dreamed of seeing what you see, but they never got a glimpse. They dreamed of hearing what you hear, but they never heard it. And it's really like in our day and our time right now, the saints of old didn't get, they, they believed God, but they didn't get to see what we see these days. Mm-hmm. And the power of God being, being released and, and sent out to even um, conquer more and more of those evil spirits because, because the Lord has been training up his people in a deeper sense, in a, in a broader sense. And so, yeah, because the enemy has been cast down, that, that Satan is cast down. Amen. Then therefore, we have the authority because Christ So he got us. cast down to where? To Earth. A long way. Well, it's, it says here, like he, if he says it, he fell like lightning. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. From above like a lightning. And, and yeah. it says that Jesus was standing there and Holy Spirit was standing there. I want you to know all the heavenly <laughs> hosts were standing there. And why was Satan cast down? Because his name was Lucifer and he wanted all the worship. He, wanted he was to, an arch, archangel, right? And he was trying to make himself equal or above God. Ah, okay, equal or above God. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so when he was cast down from heaven, it, you know, when you look in Genesis, you know, in, in six days a lot of things happened, right? You can, you can look, the heavens and the earth were all formed, mm-hmm. okay? And, and who was in control of all that? <laughs> the Father. Yeah. God was, right? Oh, yeah. Did Satan have any input? What was going to be put where or where or how he was going to be done? Nada. No, 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 no. Just like Satan has no... Kind of t- he, has, he has no say where he's going to put anything in your life either. He had no say in the creation of the world. He has no say in regards to the creation of what God has made in all six in the six days. He had no say in it. He's only here as a destroyer. He's only here because he's got a bad attitude. He's only here because uh, he, he wanted to be God. <coughs> you know, and I want you to know there's a lot of cults out there like the Hellenists or uh, there's a lot of different cults that uh, want you to be at the same level or God or, or as higher or your God and uh, or whatever it may be. So this little study that we have here uh, it, it says there's four levels of the spirit world, and we're we're going to go deep. You know, last week uh, I we shared some testimony about some deep experiences. So now we're going to teach on it, and we're going to teach on this over the next number of months. And you, what do you, you mean you're not going to teach over the next number of weeks? No, the next number of months, because you need to be prepared based on how the enemy is going is and attacking North America because we're not ready. We're not ready for the Prince of Persia that's now sitting over North America, sitting over Canada, and has been since I, I, I've seen it seven years ago. We moved here five years ago, but, I, no, uh, but, I've, but, I, uh, but I've seen it for five years. We've been here eight years now. But I've seen it for five years. Okay. And the Prince of Persia, with all the nastiness of the Prince of Persia that was once over Prince of Persia, 
has now brought all that nastiness over here to North America. It was in Europe for a while, passed through there. How does how does Europe how's Europe been doing? So I want you to know um, that ugly principality is over this area right now, and the church is not ready for it. The church, the 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 assembly of the church, the ecclesia that's supposed to be in the gates protecting the cities and protecting you know as far as the fivefold ministry protecting the beloved you know, is not ready for what is happening in the spirit realm. So, so let's do some te uh, teaching on it because in Africa, they're ready for it. The, 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 the Africans have, uh, have been fighting this type of thing for many, many years. So they, they know spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. yes. And I want you to know a lot of the uh, people in, in India uh, know spiritual warfare because they've been fighting all, pretty much every, there's 333 billion gods in India and they all got a tail in their butt and they, and they, uh, <laughs> And you know, the, you know, half man, half half animal. You know, how do how how do they how do they get all these myths? And the same thing in Pakistan, same thing in China. So, over, you think it's a coincidence? Okay, so let's just let's just look at some, look at some of the things here. So when when Satan, when the Lucifer, who wants all the worship, when he fell from heaven, he went through what? He went through the second heaven. He went through the air. So he, he is known as the prince of the air, right? Okay. So we have we have the we have we have, we have that second heaven, and then he fell to earth, and we and we know that earth there, there's there's earth on earth. We're we're the earth, okay? But there's earth, okay? There's rocks, there's trees, there's all kinds of things that God made. Do you, do you think do you think the devil wants to destroy it all? Yeah, he wants to destroy it all. And then oh, is there water there? Yeah, he he went. It says one third of the demons fell. So they're 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 the prince of the air. They're on the earth. They're in the trees. They're in the rocks. They're in the water. And it says it it says they're also under the earth. The demons are also there. It says they're on all these places. Now, what are their manifestations in all these places? What do they look like? Well, I want you to know prior to the flood, or prior prior to um, uh, what how like God had to cleanse cleanse the, uh, you know, the earth. He had to cleanse a, a lot of different things because the fallen angels were messing up the DNA of God in the human beings that he had created because the fallen angels were now taking human beings and they were having offspring. So now you had the DNA of Satan uh, mixing with the DNA of man disrupting the DNA of God and God says this can't happen anymore I got to stop this this is wrong is that happening today yeah. is that happening today where where Satan or through man or through knowledge is messing with the DNA of yeah. man uh, yep. yep it is it is so uh, God God really doesn't like Anybody messing with the DNA of his creation? No, and and, how, and you know, and like even in that scripture passage that's that's there, like Exodus you, twenty. Okay, you read that. Okay, Exodus twenty verses three to five, and even a little bit farther, and it says, you know, where the Lord is, uh, you know, he's, he's saying, you are not to serve any other gods before me. You are not to make any idol or image of other gods. In fact, you are not to make an image of anything in the heavens above on the earth below or in the water beneath. You are not to bow down and serve any image, for I, the eternal your God, am a jealous God. As for those who are not loyal to me, their children will endure the consequences. See, that's interesting, because this is following now through some of the generationals, right? Um, as for those who are not loyal to me, that is to God, their children will endure the consequences of their sins for three or four generations. But for those who love me and keep my directives, their children will experience my loyal love for a thousand generations. So there's a whole lot more positive available than the negative if we would but serve and love the Lord. And in verse 7, and it says, And you are not to use my name for your own idle purposes. So selfish ambition, like, uh-uh. For the eternal will punish anyone who treats his name as anything less than sacred. So to, to mock, to treat the Lord's name as anything less than the most sacred 
is not pleasing to the Lord at all. Okay. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. So what we're, what we're bringing in prophetic teaching here is that the, uh, the, the church or the, or the uh, that's here in North America is not ready for the onslaught of the demonic attack that is coming and hitting North America because we're not, we're not totally ready for it. Some churches are. Some people are understanding what spiritual warfare is, but most aren't. So we've traveled for 30 years and we, in, in different nations and different things. So we've, we have a lot of interaction with a lot of different other nations and seeing how uh, these other nations who are in constant, let's say, demonic attack of different things, how they handle it. Well, a lot of those different nations handle it pretty well. They, 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 in Africa and India, they know about prayer and fasting, and they know about how difficult it is when there's a demonized person, and how, what they have to do when there's a demonized person, or a witch, or a warlock, or something else. Do you do you think do you think those are just fantasies? Do you, you think you know the, the people just made them up? You know, the, there is a dark side. So that dark side is here in North America, and the church needs to come awake. In, in the revelation and the power of the blood and the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the voice of God to speak against this, this evilness that's coming against the North American church because we've fallen asleep and we need to come, most of us have fallen asleep. There's some out there that are punching way above their weight and we're one of them. And I want you to know there's some other church, churches and ministries out there that are punching far above their weight. And so is mm-hmm. like the Glory Center in Brandon. They're punching far above their weight. And there's some other ones in Brandon punching far above. I hope, you're, I hope that you are part of a ministry or a church that's punching above your weight because you're, you're walking in the authority and the power that you are. Amen? Okay. So let, let's look at this verse 10 again. And it, and it says, And then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Now do you think that that's, that's the devil speaking? Or do you think that's the father speaking? Do you think that's God speaking? It's the voice of God. Huh? It's the voice of God. It's the voice of God. In other words, all right, so it's the voice of God. And the voice of God is, he, he is saying, all, and he's saying all the, the power, the resurrection, light, and power of his Christ, of, of, of his son ha, has come, have come, for the accuser of the brethren. He's, he, he's taking out the accuser of the brethren, the devil. The devil that fell like lightning, okay? Let's talk, talked about in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, all right? But it, when the devil fell like lightning from heaven with one third of the angels, it went through the second heaven, okay? So they, they became the prince or the domination of the air until Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Until that time, over that 5,000, 6,000 years or more, they had dominance in the air. And it says it fell to the, they also came to the earth. So they had dominance in the earth. And it says they, they fell into the water. They had dominance in the water. There was nothing to fight them. They had complete control. And it says they also were in complete control underneath the earth. So that's why it says in Scripture, everything above the earth, below the earth, and on this earth is going to bow down to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, because of the blood. Because the, the demons, when they fell, they took out, they, they fell into every area and substance below heaven. Below the third heaven. Pardon me? Yeah, below the third heaven. B- below the third heaven. That doesn't mean the devil isn't up there accusing you. But it, t- it says in Ephesians chapter 2, Verse 6, and we keep coming back, that it says you're co-seated with Christ in the throne. So when the devil comes up and says that you're, 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 that you're, you're a, a sinner, how could you be a sinner sitting in heaven co-seated with Christ as a son of God? Just kick the devil out. He's nothing but a bully. But he's, ta- he's taking advantage of all those who aren't saved. So that's why we've got to kick it up a notch right now because I don't know if you heard about end times. This is not end times. This is, let's get it into gear times. <laughs> let's get the revelation and get it into gear times because this is the time of, <laughs> this is the time of, of restoring 
the, the bride of Christ. The, because Jesus is coming back for a bride that's without spot or wrinkle. Not with all these blemishes. He's coming up with victorious, good-looking bride. A church that's, that's kicking butt. Doing what? Advancing the kingdom of God. And if the, if the kingdom of God is advancing, where is the devil going? Where are the hordes going? <coughs> of the demons. Well, I want you to know, they're not going to 7-Eleven, and they're not going to Tim Hortons, but they could be going to Starbucks. But because um, <laughs> of the symbol, mm -hmm. <laughs> check the symbols out, eh? Yeah, but we like their coffee. I might get sued, but well, that's, that's just the way problem. it is. That's the problem. You know, uh, I tell it like it is. White. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna get. I'm getting. I'm gonna get a reinforcement coming over here. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. What do you call it, Murray? When there's something happening and people are getting saved all over the place. Normal day. <laughs> a normal day for Murray, hallelujah. There it is. That, that's what it should be. The restoration be. rocks. Yes. Yeah. The, what do you call it? You, you, God's you're, restoration station. What? God's restoration station. It's a restoration station that rocks because revival is every day. Yeah. God doesn't take a day off for revival. He wants it every day, 24-7, right now. Hmm. Wow, praise the Lord. You know, one of the exciting things that we're getting reports from all different parts of the world, whether it's Fiji, you know, we're, people are getting saved all the time, everywhere, okay? Uh, even here in North America. But I want you to know that the enemy is really focusing in on us right now because we're not ready for them. So he's taking advantage of those people who are not ready. Yes. Make sense? Yeah. We're, 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 not, we're, we're not trained up. We haven't got our. Uh, we haven't got. We haven't been training for the trenches. We're not. We're not good, basic, in the in, in, brilliant in the basics in regards to kicking the devil in the butt. Haven't got army boots yet. Got, got you. Haven't got your, uh, some, yeah. uh, your spiritual boots on yet. <laughs> okay. So you need to be dressed up. Have you been putting on the armor of God? The devil says you don't need to put on the armor of God. Just you know, uh, come out in your own strength. You know. Mm. Uh, anyway. All right. Okay. So. Let's just look how, how this revival, and it, and it says, he says, who accused them before our God day and night and has been cast down. So we know in those four areas. Now look, and it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb mm -hmm. and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? What, what does that mean? And they overcame him. What does that mean, Murray? Overcame him. Overcame who again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. The devil. How did they overcome? How did they overcome the, the the deceiver? It's not hard to overcome him when they get the power of God in you. Yeah. So it's through the blood. Yeah. So right now we're going into Passover. Right now we're going in the time of Pentecost. We're going into the time of Pesach. We're going into the time of first fruits over the next seven days. So you might say, well, what does that all mean? Well, it means whatever is happening in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. What's happening in heaven right now, they're celebrating the month of Nisan, and the month of Nisan is on earth. Are we celebrating it, or do you just think Nisan is a type of car that we need to go buy right now? You know, like, I want a Nisan. Or I want a tribe of Judah so I can growl. I want to be a lion. Anyway, okay, all right. And then it says... <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives until their death. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens. Okay. Re therefore, rejoice, O heavens. It says there's a cloud of witnesses. He anybody want to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 and get that? It says, it says, it says here, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. <laughs> Rejoice, O heavens, for you who dwell in them. Do you think the devil and, and all the demons are dwelling in there? The, dev, the devil goes there to accuse, but he can't stay there. Right? Demons are not there. So who, and it says we are co-seated with Christ, and we, we know that where the saved are. Okay. But it says, Rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Okay. Who's got Hebrews chapter 12? One and two. Murray got you got it. Okay, read it loud. Therefore we also, since we were surrounded by so great a cloud 
of witnesses. Let us lay down, lay aside every weight and sin, and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hmm. Let, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before uh, him endured the cross, despising the shame, and as and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hmm. So he's, sit, he's sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. So we know where Jesus is. He's, he's also interceding for us, right? It also says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, that we're co-seated with Christ. So if we're sitting in the same place that he is sitting on the right hand of God, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Do, you, do you believe the Bible? Hmm. I think so. Okay. And, 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 and then, okay, and then going back to Revelations right now, it says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Oh my goodness. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, so we already, we already know that the devil is the prince of the air and, the, and, and how, has, has, has had dominance in the air, but we're taking them out. We're taking those Scud missiles out with the Patriot, with the Patriot missiles of the Holy Spirit, and we're whacking them, those Patriot missiles, those prayers of intercession. We're taking them out by the power of the intercession and the prayer of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of of the blood that came through the cross that you just talked about. And it says that shame and guilt is no longer there either. Right? It's nailed on the cross. Mm -hmm. So take that, Satan. Mm -hmm. We've got done. no shame. We've got no guilt. We only have the power of the Patriot missiles to take out all your scuds. Mm -hmm. Your scuddy scuddies. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but my brother really had scuddy scuddy underwear. They, they were bad. No, I'm not going there. Right. Anyway, okay. <laughs> but then we're taking out them scuds. All right. You didn't like that one? So this version says... Okay. The voice... It says... It just it, it, we're, You know, it's the same message, but it's worded just slightly differently. <laughs> well, there's underwear. <laughs> well, shall we say? Verse 10. So then I heard a great voice in heaven, and this voice says, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one have come. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who relentlessly accuses them day and night before our God has been cast down and silenced. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their witnesses, this is the way it puts it, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their witnesses, they have become victorious over him. And he's incredibly angry because he knows his time is nearly over. And so, <laughs> yeah. So we're yeah, just it, it's a it's a battle, but it's like yeah, the, Leslie. Yes. Can you go back and read that again? Sure. We were interrupted offline here momentarily over a weak connection or something. It says. Oh, okay.